Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all participants. Welcome to module three that we're going to discuss about the community resilience in the urban and rural setting. Please allow me to go through the sessions that we're going to discuss today. This is the video recording. Please feel free to come back, pause, and take your time to understand about the subject that we're going to discuss over this module. So this module will contain three parts of it. I will go through one by one. Let's start it. The module three, as I mentioned, that we're going to discuss about the community resilience in the urban and rural setting. The objective of this session, why we have to discuss about this in the community based disaster reduction is very important to understand the commonalities and difference between urban and rural settings. And the second part that the session, this session would like you to discuss about CBDR approach in both settings. How it different? What will be the challenge that we will face as CBDR implementation? And also, if we think about what we need to consider during implement the CBDR activity in that community. This session will contain three contents. The first one, I would like to describe about the definition of urban and rural, how it different. What is the key element that to consider which community is urban, which community is rural? Not only that, the second part that we would like to discuss about the key different elements of urban and rural. And then lastly, I would like to show you some sample of community-based disaster rate reduction in urban and rural settings for you to have some idea and some picture how it looks like if we talk about a community-based disaster rate reduction. What is the participatory process that we need to consider? With this, let's go through the session. You may see this one, three pictures. In, please consider this different three community uh, setting. The first one is urban community. The second one is suburban community. And lastly, rural community. These three pictures show you something that you I think that show us to see there are three elements in our community. It's not matter whether you're urban, suburban, or rural community. If we think about first people, system, and also we have to consider about what level of our engagement, what level of our participation. On the left hand side, the picture show urban community. The urban community you may see like people and also uh, the hand to hand check each other, but there's still some element of the linkage. But when we notice that the suburban community more likely close to each other, people not stand up being by themselves, but they start shake their hand and put their hand together. And the last one, if we consider the rural community, you will see that there are three hands side by side, tight, and also have more close relationship. With that, and also the, this picture also show you the difference of the community setting, the agriculture, and also the farming, and also different activity in the community. This is the picture to show you the difference of the urban, suburban, and rural community. This is the definition that um, when we think about the rural, the rural as a region located in the outskirts. So it also refers to the small settlement which is outside of the boundary of the city and also the commercial or industrial area. And also there are another key element of the rural setting is that low density of population in this area. And mostly the primary source of income of the rural areas come from agriculture and animal husbandry, or some, which is like differently with the out urban area. So we go to the next one to discuss about urban. When we think about urban, so the term of urban seems seem 
refer to the region or area with is densely populated. It's mainly more people live very dense and also engage in trade and com commerce or service. This is also this cut about the settlement of the urban population. Mainly we will uh, have the uh, high scale of industrialization that result in better employment opportunities. When we talk about urban settlement, it's not confined to the city only, but the town or suburbs. It also includes considered as urban. So this is the definition to consider about the degree of urbanization refer to three types of settlements. The degree of urbanization is depend on the number of population. Or uh, with this, you can see the cities. The city, we consider the city when we consider about the population at least 50,000 inhabitants. And density. Second one is we talk about towns and semi-dense area. With the population is less than uh, 5,000 inhabitants. Lastly, rural. The rural, as we discussed during the definition, the rural area is also consists of mostly of low density of population. With this, we can consider the area that we're going to implement the community-based disaster reduction, whether is this a high density or low density with the number of population and also the density level. This picture also shows you the sample of the difference between rural and urban. The above picture, this is sample of the rural, close to the nature, the density, low population. But when we look into urban area, the below picture, you will see that there are many inhabitants and also uh, many people live in the same area. This is totally different for us to have the same understanding about rural and urban. However, there is even the difference between rural and urban, there still have some linkages between these two. So urban areas on the left-hand side and rural areas show the picture on the right-hand side. You see the linkage between urban and rural. Natural resource, we still share to each other. People, or goods, finance, information, culture, waste population. So this uh, linkage cannot be 100% dif uh, different or independent to each other. But because like, for example, People in rural may move to urban. People in urban may move to rural. And also we the natural resource, the consumption of the natural resource also differently. However, it still have the impact to each other. When we talk about the community, please consider that the community is the connection between people and what is in common. Like when we talk this area, for example, one village, is also con community. And also in urban area, when people have the same common understanding or stay in the same area close, close to each other, that also considered as a community. There is another model that I would like to discuss here, the rural and urban development models. So this model that divided into four, so under developed rural area, and also we also have developed rural area and under developed urban area, we also have developed urban area. So either rural or urban, both also have underdeveloped and developed area of it. When we talk about urban and rural difference in disaster resilience, Resilience in urban area is primarily driven by economic capital, whereas community capital is the most important driver of disaster resilience in rural areas. 
when we talk about the community capital, we consider about health, cultural, economic, and others that mean the community and also the built capital. However, urban area may mainly consider about economic diving. When we talk about um, urban resilience in uh, in disaster resilience with this, I will describe after this, what is different in community-based disaster regulation between urban and rural. And when we go into this kind of disaster reduction, please consider about the climate and also climate change, also the impact from the climate uh, change to different scenario, the rural, urban, and suburb. These three areas also have different impact and also the different temperature. This sample of the current touristic that have impact uh, between urban and rural area. On the left hand side, describe our exposure. So in urban area, higher population density, the exposure is high, but the vulnerability of people in rural area also have vulnerability to climate impact. For example, more people employ in outdoor activity if we think about individual sensitivity, aging, people who live in urban areas also facing with aging population, which lead more um, need to consider how to uh, the aging population will be impact from the, this uh, climate change. And also the another side is about the rural area. They ha have high elderly population and high incidence of chronic illness and smoking. But we look into the key adaptive capacity factor. For urban community, if we consider about socioeconomic status, urban community also have the limit adaptive capacity and also high uh, critical infrastructure for healthcare and emergency service. With some limitation, if you consider about limitation and impact in rural area, they also have limited access to service during extinct events, for example, power, water, food, medical. All of a population of population highly educated on accessibility to the service. So each community in urban or rural also have their own vulnerability to indefinitely. The next one I would like to discuss about community-based disaster reduction in urban and rural settings. Before that, please allow me to take you go through community-based disaster reduction process. So I start with step one, the selecting of the community. Step two, building rapport and understanding the community. Step three, participatory community risk assessment. Step four, participatory disaster risk reduction planning. Five, how the community manage and implement this plan. And six, about monitoring and evaluation of the plan. Either in urban or rural community setting, the community-based disaster reduction process is still the same. However, what is different? It's different when you discuss about what would be the report and understanding the community technique. Or when we talk about how to get participation from people in different settings. If we talk about rural community, Highly community participation would be able to discuss and also facilitate to get their participation. However, for the com community in urban setting, we will face some challenge because people of uh, who live in urban area, 
they may not know each other, they may not close to each other, or they have to work at the day and night time with different of social setting with that. The, to implement community-based disaster reduction in urban area, may need to consider how to provide and get engaged through different tools, how we utilize the technology, how we utilize the information to get wider, uh, the wider audience can receive the information. This is a sample of community-based disaster risk management. You may see the, from this picture to get engaged with people. Sometimes we also need to use the technology to help. And also it's still important to understand people in each household level as well as possible. The data collection very important, social reporting very important. And also participatory of people in different gender also very important. Mapping process, assessment process. And how to implement it, how to use it. This photo show the, ex the example of early warning monitoring. So how to monitor the level of the um, front level in that area. So they utilize the technology, who can access and how to access. So this is a sample of it like, in different area of this disaster reduction at the community level. This is the key information that I would like to share with you that CBDR is a framework that also works in urban context. As I mentioned earlier, how to engage with people. So use this process to link the, the people together in the, that community. And also consider people not as potential victim, but as a resource, how to work with them, model into resilient outfit. Have to start up with, with a engage with the community scene beginning. And also in, and also engage and understand the community organization. Use community forecast at creating public awareness to have more audience to understand and know about the program and activity. And it's, it's very important to consider how to engage with the private sector in the, the activity. As you may see that there are, as you may see there are many different business in the urban area, but how we engage with them and what is their role to part of the disaster reduction program and also have to consider this disaster regulation is part of urban development process. It's not standalone activity. We come to the last part as we discussed earlier, urban and rural setting. We need the same process of disaster risk reduction at the community level. However, the difference to consider is about the characteristic of the society in that area, the number of population in that area. With low density of rural setting, people know each other for a long time. The participation is very important to get more uh, participation in rural setting. However, when we talk about urban area, we need to understand the context of the society. We have to understand the context of that community in that urban area. With high density of people, however, but social cohesion, also the people in that community may not know each other, stand alone, isolate, different type of city and urban impact to people and society indefinitely. How we can engage them in different way in urban area. That's another thing that they have to consider when you implement community-based disaster reduction. You may use technology to engage them more, to open more platform for people to share the information, or also how to inform the community that what's happening during the disaster. 
I would like to show you some case study on the secondary city in Thailand. So the objective of the program that ADPC has implemented at the secondary city in Thailand is that strengthen community in local and national capacity to undertake reduction through enhanced understanding of the vulnerability to flood and associate hazard. We consider three elements at the community when we implement this project. That community, community, schools, private sector, and religion place. First step, please refer to the process of CBR that we have to have this community reporting and also participate, participatory risk assessment. You can see that people come together, identify their uh, vulnerability and exposure. Where is the house? Where is the route? And this map is the tool to discuss and bring people to discuss. After you identify your risk and activity, it's very important to have a system to implement and use that information. With this, for example, in this area, they establish the committee between government, private sector, and community in terms of disaster risk reduction. And when we talk about a community, either urban or rural area, it's very important to consider about inclusiveness. The gender inclusion, disability inclusion, is very important for you to consider and implement your process. Don't keep that only in part of your planning, but how to engage with people in different needs in your activity. This is an example. When we talk about safe site selection and children management, we have to consider about the children in the community, whether they have the safe space, whether they have the child friendly space, and also whether women have the safe space and also able to manage their activity. And with this, not only put them in the plan, but how engage them in the process. And school play very important roles in community-based disaster reduction in different, in all settings. The training for the teacher to understand their roles and how to integrate the, the information into education curriculum. Private sector, what is their role in the community reduction? How they engage with the community? On the other side, how they sustain and also resilient for their business. They also need their plan. Information sharing between the community, private sector and government is the key of the resilience of all elements. So this is the sample of early warning system in the Utaya province. The engagement of the monk and in the temple that engage to learn about the flood safety. To implement the community-based disaster risk reduction, the key message that I would like to highlight here for you to take away. Please recognize the senior community members, the voice of elderly people. Please consider them as the group of the people who not many times that we think about vulnerability, but also they are also part of very important key element for implementation. Please consider to get engaged with them since beginning. And women, this is the sample that women in disaster reproduction, if they have the platform for them to join and also to participate, that will be the key empowering activity. When we talk about disability inclusive in this disaster reduction, not only think what to do, but please engage them to ask them what this need, how we can fill the gaps. And for example, you can see on the left-hand side photo, we have the evacuation center measurements to see whether the building is accessibility for all users. I would like to end the presentation with promote gender equality in all process and initiatives. It's to be the platform and 
also have the environment to empower all people in the community. We treat women and men equally, consider training and education for all, not only one group. Community-based disaster reduction, we need participation, we need commitment, and we need community. So this is the key element for any setting to implement community-based disaster reduction. Thank you very much. You will learn more about gender equality and inclusive in the next sessions.